So I'd be walking down New York City, like in the summertime, and like NYPD would be like, "Hey, come here." <laughs> Are you Buckley? <laughs> I'd be like, "Yeah." He's like, "Yo, we love your character." I was like, "You tell it on yourself, for right?" Me. right. right. I was like, "Why?" What's up, world? It's your boy Big Court of the Holding Court Podcast, and I'm here with the gang, 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 gang. My oldest daughter, Rachel Renee. What's going on? It's snowing, and I'm not talking about Ken. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, you see that? Ooh. She's trying to call that it. <laughs> Was that racist? <laughs> 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 no. that, was I feeling <laughs> racist? <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know. You look a little hillbilly <laughs> with your hair going <laughs> in today. You little, know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> we ain't never seen it. You yeah. look a little Billy Jack. You know what? I really wanted to make the, the joke uh, when we had uh, Gary Plummer in. Uh-huh. I want to do I need two pack of smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the six white box? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need six box. <laughs> yeah, we you got. You yes, seen him yes, uh, yes. He, you're he young, so I don't through, know. He take me through everything. Yeah, come on, you know I raised her on gangster. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but He's we got do straight like that, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm keeping him. <laughs> yeah, I'm keep. We gotta. We gotta wrong episode, circle back guys. To that. Sorry, it's the wrong episode. Yeah, yeah, we gotta circle back to that. Now you got me laughing about. It. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "No, some reasonable Buddha. Come on, Buddha. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he said, yeah. you don't see this a man. <laughs> yeah, I see is a man. Seven <laughs> thirty. Sorry, we had OG Bobby Johnson on. Yeah, we're talking Plumber, about. So we still off on that, but okay. uh, man, we got another special guest in here, man. Like I was just telling something him, related to snow. Yeah, <laughs> I was just telling his brother how I had been sleep on him. My apologies, you know. Uh, got hip to his talent on the hit show Snowfall, but his credit is way beyond that. This dude been working, 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 and he's got a couple hit shows under his belt. And several. not not to embarrass him. But I've been hip for way longer. Yeah. Because yeah. I have young boys. <laughs> yeah. And so the second he walked in, I said, it's a Red Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> all of that. Yeah, yeah. All of that. So we got the homie Brandon McLaren. What's yes, going sir. on with What's you, up, y'all? Thank you for having me. Yes, I know sir. we've been in yes. contact for a minute trying to That's make right. it work. So That's finally, right. I got to come down. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, hey, listen, I appreciate you, you know, embracing me and, and being yeah. willing to come in. Uh you know, been watching you. I stumbled on you, like I said, after mm -hmm. watching Snowfall. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, you know, with these phones, bro. Like, I'm watching Snowfall and I'm looking at content with Snowfall. And what it was is me and I mean. Okay. Is it I mean or I mean? I think it's Amen. 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 Me and Amen, we have been talking. Okay. And uh, just you popped into my For You page. I said, hell. Yeah. So that's Buckley. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so we start rapping. And yeah. you know, I know you you watch and pay attention to kind of the, the social media part of it. Yeah. Yeah. So man, I appreciate you coming, bro. Nah, man. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad yeah. to be here. Yeah. I wanted to start from the beginning, as I do with all, you know, always. Yeah. I always just assume that the audience, you know, doesn't know the history of the guest. Yeah. Um, Canada. Yeah, Vancouver. Vancouver, born and raised. Born and raised. My parents, my mom's from Trinidad. Uh, my dad's from Grenada, so they both came to Canada oh, wow. in their like twenties, and then they moved to Vancouver and had me and my my brother. Oh wow! Yeah. From the you... Caribbean to Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. Stopped Whoa. in New York, Toronto, mm -hmm. then Toronto, Vancouver. They kind of because it's a long way. Vancouver is deep from yeah. The, yeah from the. That's, that's what I was wild. about to say. Because they you made kinda... the second leg of the trip. Most yeah. people just make the first leg, <laughs> right? Yeah. And they stop in New York or Toronto, yeah. where they the made... West Indies communities are, yeah. and all of that. They made yeah. the second leg. Yeah. Do you speak any of the uh, the the language? I mean, it's we, they're both English speaking islands. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they didn't kind of raise you in the culture and. Oh no, you no I'm there. deep in the culture. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I got um. I'm part of a charity called Reach Within that's based out of Grenada. Mm -hmm. And we help Grenadian kids sort of who grow up in like the foster home um, mm -hmm. transition out. And, 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 you know, we offered them like work programs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So like I go to Grenada every year. Oh, um, wow. I ran a marathon there. I ran the mm -hmm. New York Marathon for the charity. So oh, nice. I'm like, I, I stay, I stay connected. Stay Pardon my time. ignorance. What, yeah. what is the, the native uh, language of Grenada. It's, it's, it's English. English. It's just no, like, it's, a, it's like a yeah. patois okay. English, like an accented English. Okay. But yeah, it's a bit okay. that too. Oh, okay, it's, it's, it's I see. English, yeah. I see. Yeah, and and so Vancouver, if I'm not mistaken, I used, I used to be mm -hmm. good. Okay, mm -hmm. I think yeah, you. it's about Thank a you. two and a half okay. drive <laughs> north of Seattle. <laughs> So okay. Close. It's close to yeah. Seattle. Yeah, it's what right I was there. about to say, because I know you have Toronto on the east coast. Mm -hmm. Above yeah. Detroit. And then you have, yeah. is it Winnipeg in the middle? Winnipeg's in the middle, like okay. right above Montana or something yeah, like that. Yeah, one of those. Okay. Yeah, and then, yeah, you know, yeah. so British Columbia. Yes. You know, uh, Birdman lived there for some of his childhood, about 10 years. 
Oh, where? In BC? Yep. BC is small. Yep. It's not that big. Well, yep. it's a big province, but Vancouver is not that big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So what's it like in Vancouver? Like, I mean, it, like it rains a lot. It's mm-hmm. like Seattle, but it's beautiful. Like mm-hmm. aesthetically, Gorgeous. it's beautiful. Gorgeous. Like you got like the mountains on the ocean. Whistler, all that. Yeah, right exactly. Yeah. You know what Black I mean? Home. So you ah. can like, it, like it's like on the ocean, on the Pacific Ocean, mm-hmm. and then you can drive two and a half hours and you're in Whistler, which mm-hmm. is like a world-class ski resort. Beautiful. Mm. So it's beautiful, like aesthetically. I forgot, Ken, your mom lived in Seattle. I forgot you spent a lot of time up there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. She was in Seattle. Yeah. yeah. So I I'll go up that. to like, I would go up to Vancouver and yeah. Whistler and all those yeah, areas. Yeah, it's gorgeous up there. Yes, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Mm, wow. So, it, so again, pardon my ignorance. Yeah. Do they have hoods in, in British Columbia? Yeah, in they, got, they got hoods. Really? Yeah, definitely. What is it like up there? What is the ghetto like, like up there? I mean, it's, it's you know, government housing, mm-hmm. um, subsidized housing. Mm-hmm. Same, same, same thing. Same kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. What is the, is there a crime rate like, like here? Yeah. I mean, you know, especially, it's wild. Like, so I grew up in a place called Surrey, which was like a suburb of Vancouver. Mm-hmm. And like about a year ago, I'm watching National Geographic Drugs Inc. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They doing it on they doing it on Surrey. Oh wow! <laughs> wow. I, grew, I was like, like yo, when it, happened. it was wild. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I mean, you know, like anywhere else, you know, uh-huh. like there's there's crime. There's okay. you know, there's poverty. There's people trying to yeah. trying to get by. Were you moving here? See, that, that's news to me. I always just thought yeah. it was beautiful. Yeah, that's I'm like, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it nice is. Up like, but like yeah. anywhere else. I'm from California I mean? though, and all the shit we have here. So yeah, I was yeah. like, Vancouver is nice. Yeah. When you came to the states, was it like a culture shock, just in terms of the temperament of the people and the environment? I mean, not really. I like mm-hmm. I growing up in Vancouver. Like I was like such a hip hop head, and mm. so like and and like I have a lot of family who who was from New York. Like a lot of my all my my dad's brothers and sisters. Most of them went to Miami and New York, so I would go see them as kids. I'd be in New York all the time, Miami all the time. So it wasn't like, yeah, mm-hmm. I'd never been anywhere. I got you. Know? you. All right, real question. Though. Yeah, yeah. So Seattle is yeah. deeply, deeply rooted in West Coast hip hop. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. if you go to Seattle, it's mm-hmm. Bay Area. Yeah. They're big supporters, Mac Dre, mm-hmm. and every like. But just a couple hours north. Yeah. What do you guys? Is it East Coast or West Coast? I mean, it's a it's West Coast influence. I was always more of an East Coast hip hop head, just because like that mm-hmm. was a time. You know, mm-hmm. like I'm yeah. 43. I was born in 1980. That's okay. When, like yeah. Nas came out with Illmatic. So that was always <laughs> my kind of. I was always gravitated towards yeah. that. But most of the people in there, yeah, there it's like it's yeah. just it's West Coast. You know, like mm-hmm. it's yeah. kind of like Seattle weather, Bay Area weather. Mm. It's so it's a lot of the same influence. I'm just wondering because you know Sebo and all mm-hmm. them, they would go to Seattle. Oh, for and sure. Just post up. Yep, yep. that's right. Because Seattle had that, like they had love yeah. for the West Coast. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Sea Town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What um what about uh what did you grow up listening to? What were your influences? Oh man, I mean I like as a kid, a lot of like reggae music because my mm-hmm. dad, you know, so like a lot of Bunny Whaler and Peter Tosh. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my cousin, um, you ever heard of a group called Aswad? They're a British reggae group. Mm-hmm. So he was like the head of that group. They oh, um okay. they did Don't <clears throat> Turn Around, that Ace of Bass. Mm-hmm. hit back in the mm-hmm. day he like remixed that so like oh, okay. um a lot of that as a kid and then growing older like i said it was a lot of souls of mischief coming up mm-hmm. um, 93 told me yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you know a lot of nas a lot of smith and wesson okay Ooh, cam click like that was sort of that was like my stuff, yeah 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 you know so you never really got into like the south or the west uh, i was never rap. not it was never for me i okay. don't know why and i was mm-hmm. sort of like i remember as like 12, 13, I was like a real conscious kid. Okay. You know what I mean? And I had mm-hmm. an I had an older cousin who was actually came to live with us from Toronto <clears throat> and he was getting his master's in education. Mm-hmm. So like as a 13 year old, he would come and like bring me like the autobiography of Malcolm X and mm-hmm. all these books. Mm-hmm. So like I was like on this like program, like <laughs> yeah. outside of my normal school. Like he really kind of learned me up. So yeah. that kind of I think my musical taste was informed by like uh, all the things he was given to read me. Yeah. Uh, at like 13, 14. Uh-huh. So I think, you know, I think it kind of patterned that. Was that in your household as well? Were your No, nah, really my parents closer? weren't really weren't really like like that, but mm-hmm. my cousin was. And like he mm-hmm. came to live with us for like two years. I mm-hmm. think I was like 12 and 13. Mm-hmm. And like that was really formative for me. Cause what like, is the temperament like uh in Canada? Because obviously Malcolm X and all that is dealing with civil rights here right. in the States, which has been an issue since inception yeah yeah but, yeah but like I, I don't know anything about canada what's what's it like up there well as it's, far as- it was different you know because 
like my parents' generation was, I think, like the first, like, you know, like Canada has like a historic black population in like Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. And that's where the free slaves would come up. Mm -hmm. But in terms of like immigration, my parents' generation in like, I want to say like the 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 60s late 70s they uh, they were like the first sort of like wave of like black immigrants to Canada mm -hmm. um and so you know at the time i think canada was as a country was dealing with like having a lot of black people around for the first time like they just weren't there and then all of a sudden um as my dad says um uh, pierre trudeau uh opened the doors and that's why a lot of the West Indians, they initially they went to New York and then yeah. all of a sudden a bunch of them started to go to Toronto and really populated. So they talk all a, a, a lot about that, about like being the first and like people just not knowing how to, how to deal with them and, and all those types of challenges. So yeah, it's not as deeply rooted mm -hmm. in the history, yeah. but, um, but I mean, but there were, there were challenges. They were just, they might've been just like a little different. Oh, okay. So it was a little bit of race relation issues. Oh, not, not a little bit, a lot of bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Yeah, we oh. clearly have like a deep systemic yeah. problem yeah. Yeah. here. And, right, and right. it's been toxic. Yeah. Again, since inception. Yeah, it's of the, us original, as a country. the original sin, right? That's <laughs> yeah. what they call it. <laughs> yeah. You know, random question, yeah. um, just because uh, we had Glasses Malone on the show mm -hmm. and uh, me and him, we actually having a viral moment at the moment because of a conversation that we had in regards to Drake. Okay. You know, so. I saw that. I yeah. Saw that. So you being Canadian. Yeah. Uh, and Drake being Canadian. Yeah. And you, you like Drake? I mean, yeah, he's, he's not like, I had like, this is, I'm, I, I'm weird this way. Like I had a very specific time and mm -hmm. where like hip hop was really dope to me. Mm -hmm. And I've since then moved off of that time. I got you. I'm 43 and yeah. I like, yeah, it's different. But we're, like, we're, we're all there. So yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like hip hop was like special for me and yeah. like, yeah. yeah. And like, yeah. you know, like a five to seven year period where like, yeah. it was like everything to me. And then I kind of just moved on from it. So yeah. like, yeah. yeah, it's not like I don't like Drake, but gotcha. I just don't listen to a lot of new hip hop. Cause yeah. I'm just not, that's, that's how he is. Too. Yeah. I'm just not there in my life anymore. I'm yeah. just in a different space. I feel you. I, I would probably be the same way yeah. if I weren't doing what I'm doing. Yeah. You know yeah. Yeah. I mean? Yeah. Uh, I would probably be the same way. Cause I'm still in the nineties. Yeah. Like, a lot of the stuff. For sure. I, the I, I anyway. actually, tr I do try to listen. I don't find myself relating to it. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, cause I got kids and I'm yeah. all, and I was yeah. married and I'm it's not like popping bottles no more. Yeah. No, that's right. Like, that's right. I don't care. And, all you can do it in the gym. <laughs> I can yeah. only do it in the gym for a vibe and for the energy. But yeah, and know. sometimes the energy be off or the vibe be off. Like who yeah. was who was it? Uh tech. We were talking mm -hmm. to tech where he was like, sonically, I can't listen because mm -hmm. they be off beat. Yeah. You know what right, I mean? Right, like right. not, and that's not any shade, but they rap in front of a beat. That's right. Mm -hmm. Or behind right. a beat. They're not on beat anymore. Right. They're not falling in the pocket, mm -hmm. which is fine. It's it's a different era. It's mm -hmm. not yeah. our era anymore. Mm -hmm. But sonically, I remember tech being like, I it, I it throws my equilibrium it. off. Yeah, yeah. Remember when he said that? <laughs> yeah. And that's that's how I feel when I listen to it. It just doesn't sound yeah. like appealing. And I think we're we're in different spaces in our lives too. Our yeah. our priorities, our perspectives have shifted. Yeah. You know, so now we're thinking about other things like what on the way in here, what was I listening to? Yacht the, Rock. I was listening to the Eurythmics. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're not spinning yeah. the block anymore. No. no Unless it's I mean? to hit a Trader Joe's. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I so I think some that's like a big thing. But, you know, yeah. but like Drake is like, and his talent's undeniable. Would you but consider I'm, him hip hop or pop? I mean, he's both. I okay. think he does a great job of like straddling both, which is mm -hmm. like hard, man. Yeah. Yes. You know, I always say like musical, like musical geniuses when like, you're dope to the critics and you're also dope to the masses. If you mm -hmm. can do both, yeah. that's hard. That's I real. will say lyrically, that's hard. I can I can listen to it. I can respect Drake raps. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. In pocket. He's dope. Yeah. Beat. Like, he's dope. Yeah. Yeah, he's the, he is dope. But I just don't listen to like a lot of new hip hop anymore. Yeah. So that's what are you listening to now currently? Oh man. I'm like on this like this there's a Scottish girl band called Camera Obscura that I'm kinda into lately. <laughs> <Okay>. Like <laughs> I just listen to weird like I hear at coffee shops and I'm yeah. like, oh, oh that's Shazam. dope. And I'll Shazam it and I'll yep. listen to their album. I'm like, yo, yeah. this is kind of dope, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I listen to like a lot of sports radio and uh -huh. stuff. And so, yeah, you know. Being that you're a creative, uh, did you ever uh, aspire to be an artist of some kind of Yeah, rapper, actually, me and my brother, we make hip hop and we put it on TV shows. Oh, really? I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't. So yeah, we've sold like four songs to like different TV shows. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, yeah. Like, so you're a producer or rapper? No, no, we rap. Oh, wow. Yeah, so okay. like, my because my brother is really, really dope. Mm -hmm. So maybe about like three years ago, 
I was like, yo, like I'm on all these shows. They always mm-hmm. need music. Right. So I was like, why don't we just make music? Get and, you a placement. My, yeah, sense. like they have to find it anyway. <laughs> yeah. And like I'm doing them a favor. So I think we right. put like four different songs into TV shows. Oh, dope. So that's like a little way for me and my brother to be creative yeah. and, and work together. And uh-huh. he gets a little shine, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It was really dope. So I did a yeah. show called, the first song that we sold, I, was, it was, I did a show on CBS called Ransom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... uh that was the first time we decided over Christmas to record some music. And yeah, like they they played it on the whole intro of the episode. And mm-hmm. like just to see my brother like <laughs> just like to hear his song on like a yeah. CBS primetime show. Yeah. That was really dope yeah. for him. So I try to put him on. And yeah, so we do that like on the side. Yeah. Yeah. I did that when I first started was with my producer homies that were making beats. Mm-hmm. Cause we licensed instrumentals all day long. And yeah. I was like, oh, I got all these instrumentals. I, <laughs> I would slide them in. I think I had a Bravo episode where we had like Gone to, in a reality show, gone yeah. to a strip club, yeah. and they needed like some upbeat. <laughs> yeah, and I, it might have been Chris Calico or someone. Yeah. I slid a song and it was like up, and I was just breaking the homies off back home. Yeah, none of the networks don't listen to this. <laughs> yeah. I was I was definitely hooking my boys back home up. Like, hey, I'm gonna slide you into this thing. Yeah, and yeah. one thing producer Ken will put you in the game. Yeah, he will hey. definitely do that. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Um. Did you know? Did you always want to be an actor? I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think it took me a minute to like have the courage to like say it out loud and to like do it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think like deep down inside. Why did you need the courage? Were your were your family were they, were they supportive? Nah. Oh. Nah. Not even a little bit. Um they thought it was a pipe dream. Yeah. And you well, know, hold they're, on, they came from music and bands and Yeah, but they were like, but they're also like immigrants and they're like, you know, they're very like education steep in the yeah. West Indian <laughs> culture. <laughs> and, yeah. And so immigrant family. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't they weren't having it. Um uh, until uh, this, and like the great thing uh, uh, about my parents is that like we've since talked about it, mm-hmm. and like now they're very supportive. Mm-hmm. Um, so much so that like, so I did um, I did the Turner and Hooch reboot on mm-hmm. Disney Plus. Nice. I got my mom and my dad both speaking parts. In oh the wow! Show. Oh, so you didn't put the mom and dad on? I put I everybody, like this guy. I put my brother <laughs> on. I'm an opportunist, dog. <laughs> he do it just like I. Do. Yeah, man. So yeah. and like so that was like a full circle moment for us. <laughs> That's dope. You know, like, I think we only did 13 episodes, but, like, my parents are in two different episodes. They uh-huh. both have a line. Are your parents still together? Uh, Ish. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they figuring it out. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. They got um, okay. But we still all hang out. That's dope. Um, But that's, like, immortalized. You know what yeah. I mean? So when I have kids, I can be like, yo, that's grandma and that's grandpa in, in the show. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so wait, how long on. did it take you to, I, well, like you said, it took time. When was that? What age was that? Oh man, um, I think it, it began. It be like I was always involved in like plays in elementary school, mm-hmm. um, and then uh, I did my first commercial. I was twelve. My mom had actually, my mom, my mom's a bit of an opportunist too. <laughs> come to think of it. She was driving home from work one day, and I think she heard an ad on a radio show that this agency was looking for ethnic kids to put in commercials. So my mom came home one day and she's like, hey, Brandon, like I heard this. Would you be interested? And me and my younger brother were like, yeah. And so I think um, that first year I booked like five commercials when I was 12. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is great. (laughs) I show up, people give me food for free. Like, and I loved it. And then I got braces and my agent dropped me. Talking about like 92, 93, right? Um, and that was kind of it. And then I was involved in like my theater program in high school. But I also mm-hmm. I also played D one soccer. So I went to okay. University of Albany on a full soccer scholarship. Okay. So like that was a path I was going on. So I went to school. I got my degree. I have a bachelor of science in human biology. Wow. Um, okay. So that's where the calves come from. Yeah. yeah. You, you beat that. I, I peeped it. Ah! I peeped it. I, yeah. I was like, yeah. man, where's this ancestry? I peeped this it when I seen it. I was like, they got calves like yeah, that? Yeah, I be having That's got to be, be a running calf. back in football, <laughs> yeah. soccer player. Yeah. Hey, I be having calf in me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got and high calves. And I got calves, these calves. So. So oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, what'd you dare say? What'd you dare say? Calf in me. There's an infamous say that I love about his dad's story. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, my dad throw me up under the bus, you know, because I work out. The week he did it you told me I, it's been my yeah. favorite story yeah because you, know, you were all big and I'm he deflated always, yeah, and then he just looked me up and down and just so how's your leg oh wow <laughs> yo parents know how to do that though right man you know, yeah. Yeah, they, they know what do you, yes they know what the spot for what yeah. what do you I, we don't do that to you 
Well, my mother, you? Oh, 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 wow. Me or your mother? Both of y'all. Do we? Oh, okay. Yes. My apologies. So, but no, it's okay. <laughs> Fun times. <laughs> we grew up together. It's okay. Yeah, I had her when I was 16. So, okay. listen, I, I may have said the wrong thing. thing. Yeah, no, I love it. makes the show I may have said the wrong thing when I was 19. <laughs> Sorry. It happened. 19? <laughs> oh. So last look at week. Her. I'm sure. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um. It's getting awkward. <laughs> yeah, awkward. I'm I'm like, that's my grown child. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> soccer um, D one. Yes, soccer yeah. D one. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so I was, you know, going to school. Um, and I got my degree, and I think it was it was in my junior year. Um, I had uh, I had gone to watch. I was dating a girl at the time, and I was I went to go watch her sing because she was in an acapella group. So I went to go to the theater at the university. And I hadn't been in the theater since high school. And, uh, you know, cause I was playing soccer and I was like, I, I was like, it was a science degree. I was in a lab all the time and just playing. And, and I walked into the theater by myself to go see her sing. And I just like started crying, like mm-hmm. just being in that space. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, yo, like I miss this. And I was like, I need to like, I need to like see this out if mm-hmm. I had such a strong reaction. Crying because you missed it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I was just so deeply affected by just being in the room. Like cause mm-hmm. I hadn't been in a theater space, you know, like a live performing mm-hmm. arts theater yeah. for like four mm-hmm. years. So the next day I called my mom. I was like, yo, listen, like I'm going to try to take a couple of acting classes before I graduate. I'm going to still graduate because I was on scholarship. I had four years. My mom's like, you, there is no fifth year here. <laughs> there is no like play of class. Like, you're not going back. Well, you have four years to get this degree. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm going to switch some stuff around. I um, I called the head of the acting department. I was like, look, I'm a, I'm a soccer player here. I'm a, a human biology major, but like, I want to take like a 300 acting class because I've acted before. I'm not trying to take a class with freshmen. And she's mm-hmm. like, well, that's not how this works. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, let me audition for you. And if you think I can take the 300 class. So she let me audition and she put me in the 300 class. And then in the, my senior year, I got a lead in one of the school plays. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that was kind of it. I was like, all right, I'm going to I'm going to give this like a real a real hard shot. Mm-hmm. But what made you go into biology? Because I was good in science. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Gotcha. Yeah. And you got that degree still? I got my degree cum laude. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're like smart, smart. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you like smart, smart. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, got mine too. 3.97. There you go. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Now you smart, smart. Cumlade. Okay, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Listen, don't Damn, be ashamed. Got only got only cum laude. No, you got straight A's that semester you went, didn't you? <laughs> I did, but yeah. it's not the same. Yeah. yeah I got an A semester. I got right. an AA, which is like Nigerian so, um, culture is like nothing. So after I graduated, I was like, listen, mom, I'm gonna like I'm gonna come back to Vancouver because Vancouver has like a big film scene. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? A big TV scene. Yeah. Huge. Yeah, I was sure. like, give me a year. Come home give me a year. If shit's not popping off in a year, I'll go back and get a master's or do whatever. Mm-hmm. Um What's the goal behind that degree, a master's? What what career field? Would I have done? Would I never thought that far? I mm. was just trying to I was just trying to buy some time to actually have this shit work out. Got it. Yeah. Um, and I remember uh, when I got home from school after I graduated, like my mom got her friends to call me. People I haven't heard like I hadn't heard from in like years. Being like, "Hey, Brandon, like, so what you gonna do?" And I was like. Who who is this? Like you know, because she was really worried. Um, but I had a good first year, booked a bunch of commercials, and then I think in the second year, did a couple one liners, and then you know, here I am, like twenty two, three years later. What was your first big break? First big break. I think it was a show called The Days on ABC. It was mm-hmm. a summer series. Um, Evan Peters, you know Evan Peters from um, he played um, the serial killer. Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh, okay. right. That was right. Evan Peters first. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're talking like like 2004, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I I uh, I did, I got like four out of six episode arc playing like the lead girl's boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then right after that, I did Power Rangers. Mm-hmm. Then right after that, I did She's a Man. Um, mm-hmm. And I think She's a Man. That's something I. Mm-hmm. So I moved down here mm-hmm. off of like the she, She's a Man heat. Mm-hmm. Um, Seems like you've done more you know, TV so. than feature films. Is that yeah. on purpose? Nah, it's just I uh-huh. think the way the especially like in the last ten years, the way mm-hmm. the business has gone with streaming and everything. Right. There's just not a lot of features being made unless they're right. like huge, right. like mm-hmm. superhero movies. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and that's like such a tight, limited that's space. Right. You know, so it has like, shifted the. the 
the, the market. Industry. Yeah. So I'm, like all I'm, those I'm like... about the same age and started okay. in this industry about the same time uh -huh. and went to film school. Uh -huh. And since I've graduated, film is kind of yeah just deteriorated. Like those mid-level, like ten million dollar films, yeah. don't really exist anymore. Those are now like Netflix series. My right. first job you was know? at Kodak, mm -hmm. and Kodak was like, "Yeah, we're thirty-five millimeter," and it. and it's just yeah, like mm -hmm. nobody shoots film anymore. Yeah. Then it turned right. to digital. Then it turned to like let's just make episodic TV shows. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. and then all the platforms have like increased. So like, yeah. you know, so all those like, so like, yeah, that's why it hasn't really been a choice. I would love to do mm -hmm. movies, but there are so many fewer movies being made, mm -hmm. and usually like, they're like just big blockbuster things yeah. that like there's mm -hmm. like you know six people that they just kind of right rehire. Right. Yes. Right? Yeah, is it yeah. more gratifying for you to do um, like TV film opposed to theater? Which one do you prefer? Yeah, oh, man, I haven't done a play in so long, so mm -hmm. I, I don't even know if I'm like qualified to say. Mm -hmm. um, but I would like to, but I mean, it, it is great when you get to spend like, like on a show like Graceland, when you get to spend like mm -hmm. three years with a character, mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's just so, cause like you get to know them so yeah, like so deeply. Uh, and that's like a really, really good feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was it, was it any roles that you went out for that you felt like you were really, really qualified? You thought you had and. Oh yeah. You, and you have to watch other people like, ah, I could. I, that that should have been me. Yeah, yeah. There's a few. Um, there was one one movie that I really wanted. I think it was called How She Moved. It was like a step movie. Mm -hmm. Um, and I got close, and I was really disappointed with that. It's so weird. Like you never know. Like the things that you think you killed, sometimes yeah. you don't get. That's right. And the stuff where you're like, man, I, that, I blew that. I need to <laughs> brush up on my. The next day, like, oh, you're the guy. So, like, I always tell yeah. actors, like, you don't know how people receive you. That's true. You know, so, like, how you feel in the moment doesn't really matter. It's how yeah. people are seeing you. So, sometimes you might not feel great, and it might come off fine. Yeah. And um, sometimes it's not even about your performance. Sometimes yeah. it, it could be little mm -hmm. things like your height. Your, yeah. your skin complexion. They want someone, they have a look in their mind. Because of who they else want. they cast opposite. Yeah. It could even be like, oh, we cast that person first, therefore mm -hmm. we have to change that. There's so many things out of your control. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really important to like not take things personally. Right. Because, you know, you'll you'll go insane. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And yeah. you, so it was, a, you said it's the Power Rangers that he did? Yeah. 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 What, how, how, so was there a lot of action involved in there that? There was a lot of action. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that was, that job was important for me because that was the first job I got where like I could stop being a waiter. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I could just. It was long. There was a, I mean, that was a long mm -hmm. season. So that's when you really season. started making money. Yeah, well, enough money to not have two yeah. jobs, which is like so valuable as an actor when you're not having to like work from mm -hmm. five till 11 mm -hmm. every night and like mm -hmm. go home and learn lines and audition in mm -hmm. the morning. So like, but I remember like being real like, I, I turned down that job a couple times because at the time there was like a stigma around doing Power Rangers. Mm. This is like an 05. Mm -hmm. Like nobody worked after we did Power Rangers. Mm. Like that's true. So I don't, I don't know a lot. Yeah, right. I'm trying to think. I'm just thinking yeah. in the moment. Like what what is that attributed to? Wow. Well, I I think back in the day there were such like hard lines like you do this or you do that. Right. Like, even with actors, there was like either you're a film actor exactly. or you're a TV, or a TV. actor. Yeah. Now everything is blurry. People do podcasts. Yeah. They do TikToks. Right. right? right. Yeah. yeah. It's like there's a lot more the mm -hmm. more movement in between the mediums. Yeah. But then it was like, oh, you did Power Rangers. Oh, you're not going to work again. So my agent at the time was like, Brandon, I don't think you should do this. And I was like, well, uh, I like money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. live, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And like, yeah. I, was, I was 25, I got to live in New Zealand for nine months. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, but I was a little worried. And then I think I got, I think when I, when I wrapped Power Rangers, I got She's the Man like nine days after I got home. Mm. And I was like, okay. See? Yeah, the curse is all. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> that was my first thought because like I was like a yeah. little like after like you go on like a like a stint like that and you come mm -hmm. back home you're like mm -hmm. oh man like you were mm -hmm. on like a high for nine months mm -hmm. and then you're back I was still living with my parents at the time mm -hmm. and I was like oh I'm just curious because yeah. I've always kind of liked New Zealand in terms yeah. I never been but in terms of the pictures um in Auckland specifically mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what what was that like down there it was incredible. Especially like as like a twenty five year old kid mm -hmm. making a little bread, mm -hmm. I had a like I had an apartment like literally on the ocean. Like I took advantage of. What's it. the ocean down there? 
it's beautiful. Which 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 specific. ocean? The specific. specific. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. All, 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 like they film Lord of the Rings down there for a reason. Mm-hmm. It's special. Like, mm-hmm. like it <laughs> yes. looks special. Like mm-hmm. it's unlike any other place I'd ever been. It's one of my favorite places on the planet. Do they shoot all the Power Rangers stuff down there? They go down there for most of it, right? They have been since. So the original shot everything in L.A. Yeah. Um, and then they, I think when. I want to say when Disney bought it, they moved it down to New Zealand because it's cheaper. Yeah, and I think they've stayed out there. So I think they're still shooting it down there. I think like they they just had the the thirtieth season or some some yeah. like it's it's, mm. it's still going on. Do you still do the do you get asked to do the conventions and all the yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll go if I have time if I'm available. Yeah, and like those fans are like. You know, there are no more loyal fans in the world. Mm-hmm. Like they will stick by you. Yeah. And stick it so yeah, like I'll go and do oh, like my a- kids knew Red be here right now. <laughs> yeah. Cartwheeling and my kids are still eight and ten. Yeah. So. yeah. But what's really dope about that is like, you know, that was what, twenty years ago? Yeah. But, like I so I still I get like, you know, twenty five year old kids mm-hmm. who are like, yo, man, like I never seen no like nobody look like me be the leader of nothing mm-hmm. until I saw you. And yeah. they were like eight when they saw. Yeah, because the Red Ranger is the lead. Is the leader. The lead. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, and you so, know what's beautiful about it is that my kids, because of streaming platforms, yep. the rare few moments we'll give streaming platforms a shout out. They discovered it recently. Okay. They did uh, just Power Rangers in general. Okay. So you know you could stream all the different seasons. So like they watched it maybe. Four or five years ago mm-hmm. is what, like, when they were watching it. Yeah, because like, you, again, it's twenty years old, mm-hmm. but they just watched it for the yeah. first time yeah. mm-hmm. and loved it. It's almost timeless. Mm-hmm. It is. I mean, that's why yeah. it's like one of those franchises. It is iconic, and like, it's still like when I got when I when I got cast in it, I didn't even know it was still going on. Yeah. But like, it has such like a niche fan base that are like that will never leave it. But mm-hmm. if they called you back to play a role in it, would you still? Oh, would you do it? I don't know. <laughs> we have to, we'd have to talk. Okay, yeah. You said didn't the price yesterday. Do, like, is today. They, they do. They do. I didn't, they didn't ask me back. I don't know. Oh, uh, I was gonna say they've had epi- again. My kids watch. Yeah, it, they do. They had a recent <laughs> episode where like uh-huh. every ranger came. But back. also uh-huh. too, like the the franchise has changed hands so much. Mm-hmm. So like, I think like when I did it, it was like five years when like Disney owned it, and then Disney sold it to Hasbro, and then Saban bought it, mm-hmm. and then so like the the franchise changes. Uh-huh. Hands and sometimes they'll give like they're like more deferential to like certain mm-hmm. rangers from a certain yeah. when a certain time. Yeah, you know. So it just also depends on who owns the franchise. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. I liked Power Rangers on WB when it was the frog walking across and they used to play it. Uh, you WB. used to watch the uh, Power Rangers. Mm-hmm. Me and cousin Brandon. It's okay. it's a past yeah. our time because okay. even the first Power Rangers is like I was already. It was oh. part of my. Dragon Ball Z oh, yeah. Network <laughs> lineup. Yeah. Yep, it's all like intertwined in that <laughs> yeah. world, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you have to take any type of uh, like fighting and and martial yeah, arts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they flew us out there like three weeks early, and we mm-hmm. had to do two weeks of like martial arts training. So the whole stunt team was from Japan. Mm-hmm. Like spoke no English. The dopest stunt people I've wow. ever seen. Like they just fly them in, and we had to train with these guys who were like, like, like it was. It wasn't. We should have got, we got hurt. Everybody got injured. Oh, wow. And then we ended up doing no stunts because, like, they <laughs> they were so efficient mm-hmm. and, like, they, we'd have to shoot two units. So, like, they would never, mm-hmm. it would take me a whole day to do, like, a fight scene and they'll do it in, like, two takes. Yeah. So I was like, why did y'all put us through all of that? <laughs> mm-hmm. And they're in the outfit anyway. They're right? in the outfit. Uh, no, well, they, because we do um, some of the acting too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, for instance, like, my, my stunt double was, like, a Japanese dude and they just, like, painted his face mm-hmm. and, like, put dreads on him. I don't know if you can do that anymore. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah, oh, no, but I have oh, photos. Yeah, he was in blackface. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, with dreads. <laughs> Ooh, hilarious. A different time, man. Yeah. <laughs> he said it's a different time. Yeah, <laughs> that was 20 years ago. Right. <laughs> yeah. well, a little soft shoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So with so you've done Graceland. Okay. You've done a lot of TV. A lot of TV. Which which would be. Because you say you you knew that you could make it a viable career once you did that, right? Yeah. Which TV show that you did where you was like, okay, I'm here. I have arrived. Even though I know nothing is guaranteed, but I can kind of exhale a little bit. You know what? I, I think it's funny. I think um, because like my career has been very gradual. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't, I didn't come in and start booking series regulars. Like I said, mm-hmm. I started like one liners, and then one liners turned into like one episode in a mm-hmm. in a in a season, and then. We do a little four episode arc. And then I remember I started auditioning for like big stuff, like series regulars, they call it. Mm-hmm. And I remember, I remember there was one audition that I actually didn't get where I was like, oh, I know I can do this. I'm just like not quite there yet. I think it was for a series regular in Stargate Atlantis. I don't know if you remember that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And 
And I knew that they liked me, but I just wasn't ready yet. But I remember leaving the audition being like, okay, like, I'm close. Like, mm -hmm. I just got to, like, refine a few things, but I'm real, real close. And then after that, it's been, like, I've been lucky. Like, it's been pretty consistent ever since. Um, so, it's again, it's like sometimes it's like the, the things that you, you perceive as a failure. Yeah. It's like, no, no, no. Like, they, they, you could tell, like, they wanted me to get the part. Yeah. But it was like, I wasn't good enough yet. What were, the, what were those things that you felt like you had to refine? I mean, I just think, you know, I always tell actors, like, walk into a room with like 20 pages of dialogue is very different than walking in with four. Mm -hmm. And so I just didn't have the reps of like being in the room with that much material mm -hmm. in an audition space. And that's just something that I needed to get used to. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so, so at the time, and then I just started to like, I was like, I just want to audition as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I'll do anything. I'll do anything for free student films. I just want to get reps. Right. Um, just so like, it's like, it's like sports, right? Right. The more reps you get, yeah. it just, I want it to become mm -hmm. second nature. Mm -hmm. Um, but I remember that one audition, I was like, oh, I didn't get it, but like, I'm, I'm like right there. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, once, once you kind of figure that part out, mm -hmm. then it's just like a matter of taste if you're the right person for the job right. or whatever. But I knew that I had, I still had like a little bit more to go mm -hmm. on my end before, you know, things would start happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what led you to the role of on Snowfall as Buckley? Snowfall, man, that was a trip. Mm -hmm. Um so I was I was doing the rookie at the time. Um and I got a call from my agent. He's like, yo, I got this audition for you. It's a show called Snowfall. I'd never seen it. Mm -hmm. I'd heard of it. And he was like, I was like, well, I'm already on I'm already on the rookie. He's like, don't worry about the rookie. He's like, just the show is great. Just yeah send the tape in. So sent the tape in and like the next week they're like, yo, I think you're going to be, I think you're the guy. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah, I think, I think you're, you're the guy. And then, uh, figured out like how many episodes it was. It was like, I think eight out of 10 episodes in that, in the season mm -hmm. that Buckley showed up. So I was like, this is really dope. So we did the deal and everything. And my agent's like, listen, I'll just work out scheduling with the rookie. Like, just leave it up to me. Um, and I get a call. He was like, hey, man, they want to know if you're going to cut your hair. And I was like, well, excuse me? Because <laughs> like I already already sent the tape. We already mm -hmm. did the deal. I'm already established on the rookie with dreads. I got to work on the rookie in like three days. I can't show up with no hair. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, they, they want to go in and put a wig on you then. <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, OK. So uh, it was like tenuous for a minute because mm -hmm. like they couldn't decide on like how big the wig should be. Mm -hmm. I had to keep going back in and figure it out. Yeah. Then like on the rookie, I, like I had a beard. They wanted to shave my beard off. Mm -hmm. I'd already like the continuity on the rookie, mm -hmm. but it all worked out. And wow. so I did both of those shows concurrently both seasons. Oh, wow. I was doing the rookie and Snowfall wow. uh, at the same time. Where did um, the rookie film at? In L.A. Oh, OK. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it was wild. It was wild. But also, like, hey, props to my agent because, like, a lot of people won't, like, they wouldn't bother because, like, a lot of work with the scheduling. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. A lot of people are yelling at you because I'm not available on this day. And they're like, yeah. well, we can only have this location for that day. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, no, my team is great. They but made pretty it much everybody on Snowfall had on wigs, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's true. That's yeah. true. But, you know, a lot of times, like, you know, with casting, they'll just cast mm -hmm. somebody else, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's easier. Like a lot of times, they won't even dye somebody's hair. It's like, well, mm -hmm. we want a blonde, and they'll be like, well, dye the person's hair. They're like, no, we just want a real. So they were they were real. They were real. Uh, they worked with me. So that. with Snowfall, were you at all? Were you familiar with that story and that whole thing of the eighties with the crack ep epidemic? Yeah, and yeah. Like Ricky historically, Ross. I I yeah. was, but I never watched the show. So I mm -hmm. remember when I got it, I watched the first season, mm -hmm. and then I had to stop because I was like, I was like these really good yeah yeah <laughs> and i was like and you know what i mean and i was like i have a thing where like i don't want to like imitate people that i like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so like i have to kind of step away from it a little mm -hmm. bit yeah so i only watched the first season i was like i need to take a break because like i'm gonna walk in there and like start doing things that like other people are doing that i like mm -hmm. um that first season was good so yeah for mm -hmm. sure real good. for sure yeah yeah yeah. yeah, being that that was a such a foreign world to you. Yeah, I mean, did you have to do research? Uh, how did you go to that place to to be able to, to deliver Buckley and understand the lingo and just the whole yeah. nuances of that world? I mean, I feel like I've I've been around those spaces, mm -hmm. like not in the, obviously not in the time, mm -hmm. but like I I I had enough 
uh, connectivity to those spaces that like, that wasn't really hard. I think for me, what was important was, you know, Buckley was written as such like an unlikable person. Mm-hmm. Like, how do I bring some humanity to him so mm-hmm. that he's just mm-hmm. not all bad? Right. And I know the producers were worried about that too, because mm-hmm. like, he's just like a bad, yeah. just like an evil man. Yeah. And I was like, well, how do I bring, how do I bring some humanity to this guy where like, he's just not like one dimensional. Mm-hmm. And that was like the part that I really tried to work on with, mm-hmm. with Buckley. I don't know. I can't, and correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know of any redeeming moments for, for no. Buckley. <laughs> what did he do? Cause he was just on some shit. He, he drove w- her at the end until she played him. <laughs> did he? Yeah. Cause I just remember um, him smoking dope and just stabbing, yeah, every, just yeah. stabbing everybody in the back. He was yeah, like, he was like I said, money. Yeah. He, he was a bad dude, he but was. like he was a bad He's dude. So but redeeming. you know what was crazy? So I um I did a show last summer called Everything's Trash in New York mm-hmm. City. And it was right after the first season of Soul Park. I mean that that the season that I was in, season five, mm-hmm. right after it came out. So I'd be walking down New York City like in the summertime, and like NYPD would be like, "Hey, come here." I'm like these motherfuckers. <laughs> Are you Buckley? <laughs> I'd be like, yeah. He's like, yo, we fucking love your character. I was like, you tell it on yourself, <laughs> right? Right. right. I was like, why? <laughs> right. But right. like, I guess like, I guess like, <laughs> to like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And like, so just to make a character that bad, be like, people like, people like Buckley. Yeah. He's like he's yeah. a bad guy. Now but he was dope, but yes. yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, um, and even like, you know, I think even like when like when he gets fired from the LAPD, like when they drug mm-hmm. test him, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, he got betrayed by his, like he was, he, he did a lot of betraying, but mm-hmm. he was also betrayed. So just trying to like, just trying to ground the character in yeah. like, in, in some, in, in human, even if it's bad human, try yeah. to ground him in some human. That's right. Yeah. Outside of obviously Buckley, where were, who's your favorite character on Snowfall? I mean, it might be Unk. You know, yeah. only because I got to work with him so much. Yeah. yeah. You know, and Eamon's a trip. He's a great guy. He is. Um, That's my favorite character. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Jerome is everybody's favorite. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, because, and like, I don't, I didn't really get to work with anybody else. It was oh, just, okay. Yeah. It was just Unk and, uh, and Auntie, really. Like, oh, wow. And everybody yeah. else. I didn't really, oh, you're right. I really yeah. didn't, yeah. I didn't have any scenes really with Damson. I didn't really uh-huh. work with a lot of the other characters. So, okay. Like, that was sort of like my world. Mm-hmm. So I just got I got a real appreciation for mm-hmm. for um for Angela and uh, mm-hmm. and Amen. Yeah, she's and dope. She's great. Mm-hmm. Like just I'm like the sweetest person in real life. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. No, Amen was, is a I think he's an East Coast cat, right? Yeah, yeah. I think he's a New yeah. York cat. Yeah, yeah. He he played he played out that West mm-hmm. Coast OG though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the infamous line? Uh, teach teach you your boys how to squabble. Yeah, teach you boys how to squabble. Yeah. Was, I, that, that, was that, that improv? I or? don't know. I guess that was before I came on. Okay, okay. But knowing Eamon, probably. <laughs> was he you the know? one that we were assuming was the Chico character at the beginning? Uh, Yes. Yep. Yeah, we yep. were assuming that he was assuming, the Chico. Yep, that's right. So we, we've interviewed the actual people involved in the case that's just kind of loosely based around okay um, okay specifically the guy that was probably the aiming mm-hmm. character oh really yes yeah. okay yes. i would like to watch that you can send me that <clears throat> definitely yeah, directly definitely. Yeah, shout definitely. out to the homie chico yeah shout yeah. out to chico and you know they're doing a spinoff right no i didn't oh you didn't hear about that no uh-uh. oh, strikes Strikes over. Strikes breaking strikes news strikes breaking strikes. news oh, yeah. what's the spinoff yeah so um okay. well before we get to the spinoff, yeah, yeah go ahead, go ahead. before we get to the spinoff yeah. um did you like the way it ended? Yeah, I did too. I did. I did. Yeah. A lot of some people had issues with it, but to be honest with you, that was probably the only way it could end, yeah. and that was true to life. That's true the real. To life. Yeah, yep. that's the real ending. Yep. Yeah. So really I, I, I had no. Pr- it's endings are so hard. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know. I don't Sopranos, know. Like people can complain. Yeah. How do you end? How do you type yeah. all those storylines yeah. in in a way that satisfies everybody? Yeah. So I think what you do, and I think in this case, what they did is like you just tell the most truthful version of it. And I remember even when I watched it, I was thinking to myself, I actually got kind of emotional, not crying, but mm-hmm. you know, because I know that person. Yes. Mm-hmm. I know him. I know cats that I watched in the hood that some of them I even looked up to or even my peers mm-hmm. that was on they shit. Mm-hmm. And when I look at them now, 
That's them. That's them. I mean, listen, my I have have an older half brother who just passed like six months ago. Oh, sorry, but he was on some next shit too, man. Like he was locked up for years, Mm -hmm. always on there, and uh, it's a cautionary tale, man. It happens more often Mm -hmm. than not. Yeah, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean. And And, and what it was is it's the thing of like with him, I think with uh, Damson's character, Mm -hmm. the fact that like the world beating. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what it is. He was broken. Mm-hmm. That's all it was. He mm-hmm. was just a broken man. And mm-hmm. like, I, I be thinking to myself, mm-hmm. like, damn, I'm just thankful because when I look at my friend, I don't judge, mm-hmm. you know, because everybody doesn't have the coping mechanisms. But, you know, I'm like, damn, that, could, that could easily be mm-hmm. any of yeah. us. That's oh, a hard yeah. life. It could easily be One any of us. One or two different yeah. decisions, man. Yep. You know, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, and like, there are some, there are some cats that I know who I grew up with who had like the, the fortune to like, be able to like pivot mm-hmm. at the right time mm-hmm. before they got in too deep. Mm-hmm. Somebody catches a lucky break, you know what I mean? And then some, mm-hmm. yeah. So there's like a lot of ex- extenuating circumstances too that, you know, how yeah. somebody ends up. But uh, I thought it was like, for, I don't know if they could have ended it any other way. No, that would have right. been any more satisfying. Yeah. Cause it yeah. would have been cliche for him to get killed or go to jail. That's, yeah. that's always the yeah. thing, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. All right. Oh. Spin off time. Come yeah, on, yeah, spin off. Yo, I think right after the finale aired, uh, there was like a news uh, the release about. Um, so it's gonna be about gangster rap in the '90s and how like a lot of these guys took all that that drug money and they they made record labels. Oh, I think I did. You might have seen. I guarantee that. you saw. Yeah, yeah, it. And yeah, it's gonna, yeah. Uh, Gail Bean is gonna be the lead. Okay. Oh, okay. Now I know what you're you remember. About. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I like. I liked her. That's yeah, a dope, yeah. That's so, a dope concept. That is. That's dope. Yeah, I mean, when I read that, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna watch that. <laughs> <laughs> right or being it? Yep. I mean, I'm not dead, which is crazy to me. Oh, you didn't die? <laughs> no, she left me on the side of the road. Yep. That's right. That's right. Because he was like, yeah. "There is no house in." I, like, yeah. yeah. I, I thought you OD. I thought you OD or something. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Which is crazy because, like, as crazy as Buckley was, I'm like, they are going to kill. <laughs> they're going to kill him good, and yeah. that, they kept me alive, which is really great. Are there any? And last question about Snowfall. Yeah. Are there any memorable moments? That that in shooting snowfall that happened either on camera or off camera that oh, you can man. recall. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm a <laughs> so my very first scene uh, where I'm um, where I'm in the club with Louis mm-hmm. and like I'm doing bumps at the bar. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was so I was so nervous. Was like <laughs> it's your first scene, you want to do good. So they gave me this like little vial, and. I don't know what they put in it. It's like protein powder, like, you know, some kind of. Sh- yeah. And so we're doing the first couple of takes. And it's I'm like, like a vitamin, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going at Fake it. And I'm cocaine. like doing mm-hmm. it. And uh, after like the fourth take, the director, Ben, is like, cut. He's like, Brandon, are you snorting there? <laughs> I was like, yeah. He's like, dude, we're not even on you, man. Like the last four <laughs> takes. He's like, we've been like, we're shooting wide. We can't even see you. And I was like, oh, he's like, dude, don't snort that now. <laughs> but I was, you know what I mean? Like, you want to show up? I want to be like dedicated. I'm trying to like, he's like, dude, stop. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, my bad. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. He said, are you snorting that? So, I was like, yeah, you know. Yeah, I've always hiring. wondered that. How do y'all do that on camera? And snoring like, does it well, burn? Well, I mean, it... It, when the kids, when the when the camera's on me, I'm snoring it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like, don't snort it now. We're not yeah. even. We don't even see you in the shot. <laughs> I'm up there just dedicated, just it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You say um, you locked in. Uh, oh yeah, because it's my first. That was my first day, right? Yeah. 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 So That's that funny. Was, so so fast forward to you know, of course, now you being a full time actor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. The strike, yeah, it's, it's you know it's finally in in the rearview mirror. Yeah, um, what are your thoughts on on that whole process? I mean, I think man, it 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 busted a lot of people up, man. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people lost a lot, and mm-hmm. I think it's going to take a while for people to gain back what they lost. But I think it it we're on such a precipice of the unknown mm-hmm. in terms of technology and how they want to use it that I think it was a necessary evil. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't gone through all like the deal points yet, but my hope is that like the guardrails are set up now that we're not going to have to relitigate this every three years. Right. Mm-hmm. Like hopefully like they're in place. There's some precedent set um, um, so that people are able to, you know, not lose their livelihoods yeah. moving forward. Um, mm-hmm. 
but yeah, man, it was it was tough. It was a lot of people really, really struggled. It went on a lot longer than I think anybody anticipated. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. do you feel like the gripes were justified? Do you do you agree with what they're fighting for? Yeah, a hundred percent. Because I think in you know even in the last ten years, like I've noticed that like everything is getting in terms of like like everything is getting scaled back. Like I, I think you know the hope is that like the further you get in your career, the more you do, you get compensated more, you're valued mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's been feeling like everything is shrinking and like, mm. and, and it's like, well, I feel like we're hustling backwards over here. Right. You know what I mean? I feel that, man. Um, mm -hmm. And so, but while the studios are, are just collecting, yeah. you know, and it's like, mm -hmm. well, this is, it doesn't feel, doesn't feel right. Um, Even on the production side for like smaller production houses like us, mm -hmm. like this is my spot here, but you see the budgets come in for the projects that will hire you and, mm -hmm. and the budgets come in smaller. Yeah. They want the same job done. Yep. But the budget is mm -hmm. like, wait, whoa, 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 hold on. Where did it, right. where did all of this piece of the budget go? Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, we don't have that. Oh, well, we're gonna we're not gonna be able to do the same thing. Oh, we'll find another production house. Yeah. Wow. And you're like, wait, hold on. Like, yeah. So they on some like yesterday's price is not today's yes. price. Yes. Okay. But going down. That's right. yeah. <laughs> Fat yeah. Joe yeah. wants it to go yeah. up. Yeah. And like yeah. that's the, the way, way. That's the yeah. way it yeah. should work, right? Yeah. That should be the natural progression of things. At least that's the expectation. Especially mm -hmm. if you do a good job, whether you're an actor or even yeah. a or even a smaller, you know, because a lot of the times you get the the network that'll green light something mm -hmm. and a production company will do it. Mm -hmm. Even for us. You do a great job on a show and then mm -hmm. not get the next one mm -hmm. because, no, yeah. oh, did we fuck something up? Mm -hmm. or did, no, no, no. You did great. Price is down, though, and you don't want to, like, yeah. adjust your price. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So uh, hopefully in terms of, like, with the wage increases, mm -hmm. with the minimum increases, mm -hmm. like, you know, things start to trend back towards the right direction. Let me ask you, um, and again, I'm sorry. I, I apologize yeah, if I'm overstepping, but... Um, being that you have done a lot of TV shows, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so obviously for you, you know, there's a lot of residual. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have you been the person on the receiving end of the dollar check, the 89 cent check? Oh, yeah. Check? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's a and real like, thing. And like, well, it, and, and I don't know, like, I, th I don't know exactly how it works, but mm -hmm. I know like the streaming residuals are like far less than like mm -hmm. network TV residuals. You mm -hmm. know, I did a show called, um, Firefly Lane for Netflix. That was like a real huge during the pandemic. Yeah, and um, and yeah, there's they're just they're just far less. You know wow. what I mean? And 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 like that's you know that's what that and, was, and then they were saying like Netflix weren't like they weren't releasing their numbers. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like there was no way to verify like how many people were watching and if, mm -hmm. and if they're if they're paying you accordingly. You know they kind of kept yeah. everything close to the vest. So like I think all like all that kind of mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff was was part of this deal about mm -hmm. like viewership transparency right like mm -hmm. show us the data you can't just be like well we don't know how many people are i mean working. they have to know especially okay. netflix because they know everything yeah. yeah because they're subscription based they know, you know what i mean so you know <laughs> exactly. how many people paying for your profiles on there they, they know all that. they know who clicks on something yeah. exactly yeah. they know how to market to that and sell yeah. to that. i would even give them a little bit if it was like a fast channel where it's like yeah. advertising but even youtube would tell you they how know. many people click in it there's their know. job to know yeah you have every algorithm because you're basically telling us well we don't know where our money coming from yeah we don't know how they pay yeah. us so how are we gonna know how to pay you that's yeah. crazy you yeah. know they know yeah so um and you know there was a great podcast called strike talk um that i listened to during the writer's strike mm -hmm. and it, it just kind of gave you a good perspective of like at, at any at every, every point in time in the entertainment industry like when vhs became a thing mm -hmm. there was a strike because they were like well this is a new yeah. technology we right. don't know if i'm just gonna you know mm -hmm. when cable tv became yeah. a thing hbo yeah. Um, you know, in the in the yeah. 80s, they were like, yeah. well, we don't know if this is going to be a thing in 10 years. So we're not going to pay. It's all it's all the same. Oh, uh, wow. I you didn't know, know that. That's a game. Yeah. And so it, it, it's good to have that context. That like every mm -hmm. time something changes, the medium changes. Yeah. yeah. The, they uh -huh. are like, well, we don't know if this is going to. And no, you got to you got to strike a deal for the next thing that's coming out. Yeah. You can't be retroactive. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. How do you feel about um, the representation? You as an African-American. Uh -huh. uh, right. Do you feel like they're. With streaming, which yeah. in turn is um, making more roles available because you yeah. don't have to wait on Hollywood, mm -hmm. you know, to green light everything. Do you feel like there's that's the upside? There's more roles available for people of color? Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's just more content in general. Mm -hmm. um, whether that's going to, like, be sustainable, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, I know Disney Plus just acquired Hulu. Like, mm -hmm. so there's going to be like, a lot of, like, aggregation of, like, platforms. Mm -hmm. um, and, like... 
I don't know for y'all, but like there's so much, there's so much to watch out there. Mm-hmm. Like every platform, yes. I can't keep up with it. Right. With, mm-hmm. with everything. Prime. No, it's so, real. Yeah. It's a new one popping up. Seem like every day. I'm gonna be honest with you, I got a fast channel. I was like, you yeah, I got, a cha- I got a channel. Maybe <laughs> TV. So yeah. yeah. You know, so like I don't know if that's gonna change. I don't know if like like the platform bubble is gonna burst. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. everybody was sort of like chasing the next right. thing. Right. And I don't know if it's going to like maybe course correct and come back to earth. Uh-huh. Um, but I think there's just more ap- opportunities for actors in general. Yeah. Just because of all the streaming platforms, mm-hmm. in addition to all the the uh, legacy networks, you know. Do you do do you aspire to do any, um, I don't know who you look like, but there's a billion people, <laughs> autobiographical movies? Is there someone you would oh, want to play? That's a question. You know, I don't. I, I really try not to like think too far ahead because mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes you'll miss things that are right in front of you. That's right. If That's if right. you're already, you know. Yeah. So it breeds anxiety too when you start thinking too I far think ahead. So yeah. so I just try to take things as they come, man. People say mm-hmm. like, what's your dream role? I mean, I don't I don't know it until it happens. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and and when it happens, I'll probably not know it while I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. And I might know it after it's done. I'm like, yo, I think that might have been my dream role. <laughs> if know? it was done today, which one is the dream role? Like, what do you mean? Like, what, <clears throat> what I've was, done so far? Yeah, you yeah, mean? Out of what you've done thus far. Oh, man. I mean, I, I don't know. I think either Graceland or Snowfall. Snowfall was so dope because, like, I, and I whether justified or not, but, like, people started to talk about it, like, in the vein of The Wire. And, mm-hmm. like, people were really having real conversations mm-hmm. about that. And that's I was right. like, that's crazy. Because <laughs> yeah. The Wire is, like, television royalty, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's right. Right. Um and so just to be a part of something like that is like <clears throat> like that's wild, you mm-hmm. know. Um so, would you had a one to be on a wire? You know, I've never seen a wire. You you have oh, I know. Oh, you may, you gotta catch yeah, up. I know. You yeah. gotta binge yeah. on that. I know. That is like you said, television royalty. Yeah. That's, no, I know how people talk about it. I've yeah. I've worked with people who have worked on it. Yeah. I mean, it's that, yeah. you know, the Sopranos. Those yeah. are like you know breaking bad all yeah, that. yeah you know see so, i grew up watching miami vice the original the yeah. original uh gangster shit on yeah. tv yeah yeah he was there when tv was still black and white so. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just, just, right. a bit, just a little bit after that just a little bit after nah, i was we, there when we, we banging the tv with it. uhf vhf yeah. i was ca, 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 there for that yeah i was, I was there too. for that yes i was too <laughs> yeah you had five four five and nine yeah. 41 62 yeah Hell yeah yeah you didn't yeah. have and then tv went off at night a lot of these youngsters don't know that TV wasn't 24 Man, hours Man, and when today. I was a kid, you only got them cartoons that, that yeah. Saturday, 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 Saturday morning. morning. Saturday morning. Morning. Saturday Hannah morning. Barbera. Hannah Barbera. With all that <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Did you Come listen? To, speaking of which, I mean, growing up in the 80s, uh, the same age, I forget. Okay. Yeah, yeah, y'all like, youngins. You don't know. Y'all youngins compared <laughs> you to me. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up in the 80s, you listen to hip hop, but did you also, and I ask everybody this, because I know I'm not the only one, right, daughter? Did you listen to like the Yacht Rock? Did you listen to like Culture Club, Wham? Oh, yeah, Ariel Wham, Speedway, Wham, of course. George Wake Michael. Me up before you go, go. Before you go, go. Yeah. I had like, I was like on some Def Leppard, like yeah. pour some sugar on me for a minute. Yeah. Okay. So you listen to the big hair bands. Yeah, you like yeah. Rock. A little, I do sometimes. I just went to this concert. This was AC. There you go. Okay. A little AC um, and Metallica. Yeah. We're not gonna take it, Twisted Sister. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. also Twisted like Sister, D. Snyder. As a uh, as a kid, those did a show those um, yeah. videos were so visually uh-huh. stimulating. So when you're like eight, that yeah. they're just like, and they used to tell the stories. You know, there's all like the kid in the classroom and the and the teacher. Yeah. Right. So yeah. like. It was like as a kid, it was like it was entertaining. Yeah. You know? Even Will Will Smith was the parents just don't understand same storylines. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. What What was your favorite? Um. Yeah. This is random. What was your favorite '80s cartoon? Uh, he Man. He Man. I, I always thought He Man was black. I don't know why. Yeah. Did you? I, mean, I don't know when I was a, a kid. Tan. He was right? a little tan. So I was yeah. like, he, he, was he man was shit, my favorite. But he had that orange hair. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he did. In soft. the bikini all the time. Yeah. But he was he was cut, though. <laughs> it was yeah. He Man and Transformers. I was a big Transformers. Oh, yeah. Fan. Generation mm-hmm. 1 Transformers. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. you just watching that? I was. Just, you I just was watching Transformers the other day. Yeah. I think He Man and Transformers were like my. Who was your favorite Transformer? Optimus. Optimus. Yeah, and Starscream. I like Starscream. Starscream was a hater. Yeah. <laughs> he was a hater. He was yeah. the original hater. He used to hate on Megatron all the time. Yeah. What should we do now, fearless leader? Yeah. You know, and Megatron. Was a, dude, yeah, 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 yeah. Megatron, you dummy. <laughs> <laughs> you are even lying. 
Oh, you're stupid! I'm stupid! I'm stupid! He always wanted. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how to. I'm gonna tell you how it works though about okay. hooking your friends and family up. Okay. It's a real story. I was blessed to recreate Transformers with my crew here. Mm -hmm. Hasbro wanted to relaunch a Netflix series. Okay. Uh, what happened before they left the home planet? Right. Okay. So we did that. What was Com it called? Combiner Wars okay. was like their show, and we redid it. And at the time, I'm talking to one of my camera operators whose uh, family is Nipsey Hussle, okay. uh, Tech Nine, and Chris Calico, Kansas City rappers. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to them. And Chris Chris was doing voices at the yep. time. Oh, that's right. Yep. So I bring yep. one of my rap homeboys in. No one knows still, but now I'm blowing the cover. <laughs> Yo, if you go watch that Netflix series, Chris is Dinobot. What? Remember Dinobot? Yeah. When they rebooted him as Dinobot, mm -hmm. I got Chris into the, he's the Dinobot yeah. voice. Yeah. So you'll hear him in there doing Dinobot and shit. But yeah, I put him on that. Nepotism is real. Yeah, man. that's real. That's I real. sent him over to Hasbro and he was recording lines <laughs> with my and producer out there that's right now, so Matt. Dope. I ain't gonna lie. I love Dinobots. Grimlock was, yeah. yeah. Grimlock was an asshole. Yeah, shout out to Chris. He was Dinobot <laughs> yeah. uh, for those of y'all that didn't hear that voice. <laughs> and that's Chris how he ended up Dinobot. But yeah. yo, you gotta put your people on, man. I put them on. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I put them you on. believe in that? Yeah, big time. I did uh -huh. a movie um, for Bounce TV. Um, you know Bounce TV? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, a uh, Christmas movie in Toronto. I got my cousin who's in Toronto. I got him mm -hmm. to be my barber for, for yeah. the night. Nice. Now he works in the film industry up there. You know, just, yeah. yeah. He Bounce said, TV, does what's his face? What's his name? Um, still own it. Um, I, I, I don't remember. I, I'm losing his name right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I didn't know. Are, are they are they a fast channel streaming network or are they? I think they're streaming. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think so. So they're not linear. I don't. I don't know, man. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. All right. So what you got coming now? What's what are you working on now that the strike is over? Well, hopefully, uh, I'll be back on the rookie. Mm -hmm. uh, this season, mm -hmm. whenever that starts to shoot, mm -hmm. I'm not sure when. I know, like I read today, like some sh some shows are gonna start as early as November 27th. Mm. So everybody's like yeah. booking studio. It's like a mad dash. It's like mm -hmm. get anything in the can. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, ready. And so hopefully I'll be back on on this season of the rookie. And then um, there's another thing that was like very close to being done right before the writer strike mm -hmm. that I can't really talk about. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping they'll circle back okay. and we can tie that up. Uh -huh. Um, we gonna see in any any feature films? Not 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 that, not, not not soon. Uh -huh. But uh, we'll see, man. Like I'm really mm -hmm. excited about this new year. Like mm -hmm. after the strike, I just I want to see how crazy it gets. I'm yeah. hoping it'll be the busiest it's ever been. What role are you most known for when people see you? You know, that's a good question because it's it's weird. Like I have had such a weird career because like I've done a kids show. I've mm -hmm. like played like you know. Like Firefly Lane, which is like, you know, if you're like a, you know, like a 50s white woman in Dallas, you mm -hmm. love Firefly Lane. So like, <laughs> right. I'm popping over there. Yeah. And then I do Snowfall. So like, yeah. so like, I get recognized a lot for a lot mm -hmm. of different, different. Things. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, you being typecast as a cop kind of, because SPD, you guys was cops, right? Yeah, we were cops. Even in the Power Ranger, he yeah. was a cop. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cop ass. <laughs> <laughs> cop ass actor. <laughs> you like cops? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, it's hard to say, man. And like, like I said, I play um, in the rookie. I play like a mob mm -hmm. boss in the rookie, mm -hmm. and the rookie's real popular. So mm -hmm. it's like it depends on like actually like what's playing now, mm -hmm. but also like it depends on like what part of the country I'm in, mm -hmm. you know. Um, mm -hmm. So I, it's really hard to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do are you? Do you plan on going into producing? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple. I've I've been working on a couple of development things mm -hmm. um, that I've been trying to get off the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, I've gotten close to a couple of things. It just take those things just take time. Okay. Um, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, last question. Yeah. So being here, being you know that you are from somewhere else, mm -hmm. and you know holidays. Uh, how do you balance you know the holidays with being away from family and do you get that 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 holiday blues you know, nah my, my younger brother lives here now okay um okay. yeah he's married he lives in san bernardino so mm -hmm. i got him his wife oh I see. um and my parents are like you know two and a half hour flight so okay especially like thanksgiving and christmas mm -hmm. they love to leave the cold and come mm -hmm. down so like they always mm -hmm. come down so mm -hmm. I got people here, not because I've been here for so long. Like, okay, yeah. Most oh, of my so yeah, this are, is home. Most of my people are here. I got yeah, you. Yeah, got man. you. Hey, well, man, listen, it was been a pleasure, yeah, brother. Yeah, man, you guys I, are. Yeah, it was, it was fun. Yeah, 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 yeah I appreciate yeah. you yeah. Uh, coming. We've been trying to do this, so I appreciate you for making time, brother. Yeah, yeah. So, man, listen, that's another one, man. Um, Producer Ken, 
<laughs> baby Rachel, uh, yeah. Rachel Renee. <laughs> yeah. we, call it, we call her baby Rachel. Uh, Rachel I'm going Renee. by snow now. <laughs> <laughs> and we got the, Yo, and we, take that. <laughs> inform. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Snow was yeah. on his. Snow, snow was. Yeah. Was he that Canadian? Was, he was too? Canadian too. He was Canadian too. Yeah. Shout out Canada. Canadians yeah. been running some And he was, yeah, he has some criminals. Oh, no. yeah, 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 yeah. Him right. and uh, wasn't uh, 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 Return, of blah, 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 Return of the Mac. Return of the Mac. Oh. Wasn't he a uh, member? Return of the I, Mac. I think, was he Canadian? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay. I know Snow is, though. Snow uh, is for shout sure. Out shout out to Snow. Yeah. Hey, we got the homie Brandon McLaren, man. Yeah. Appreciate you coming, my brother, Holding Court Podcast, and we tapping out. All right. Yeah. All right. Salute. <laughs>